Hello everyone and welcome to my new let's play of Always Remember Me. Now this is going to be an adventure in more than one sense. This game falls into the category of dating, RPGs and visual novels, which is something so far away from what I usually post on my channel that I can't do really a thing of something that would be further away <laughs> than this. However, Always Remember Me has received a surprisingly good reviews because of its story. And if there is something that I like even more than a good strategy game or a good RPG, it's a game with a great story. Always Remember Me is also a bit more interesting for me because it's dealing with uh, the medical condition known as amnesia. The main story revolves around a girl, yes, the protagonist is a girl, called Amarantha, or Amy, and her boyfriend was in an accident and lost the memory of the past few years. And the game is about how you deal with the situation as Amy, if you're gonna fight for him or trying to uh, somehow forget about him and move on. It all depends on you. The game was made by a company that usually focuses on these games that are marketed for teenage girls. However, as I said before, I really like the topic and from what I saw it's very well uh, scripted and kinda well written. The characters are deeply thought through, I would say. I haven't really gone far in the game yet, uh, just some 40 minutes I would say, before I found out that the game hates my recording software and didn't capture the video at all. So I'm remaking this uh, in a, um, say, windowed mode, therefore the resolution is even a bit crappier than uh, I'm used to, however, it doesn't really matter because it's all hand drawn and kind of cute. And I'm going to read out all the dialogues to you guys, so you pretty much will be able to follow what's happening all the time. Uh, with that said, uh, the tutorial will not be included, but I will explain how the game is played for two of you who never played a dating sim when they were 12. And uh, I will note when I'm playing blind again. As I said, I got only like 40 minutes into the game, so nothing really major happened. I just know a bit about the story, and that is all hard-coded, so you cannot skip it. Well, you can skip it, but you uh, you cannot change the story or the introduction to the story. Um, you have to go through that in the order. Okay, so let's start. We're going to play on normal difficulty. Before I continue, this is... Uh, what's explained in the tutorial. Uh, this is your protagonist, Amy's mood, so you can see a visual representation here. Her morale and energy which uh, influence the actions she's going to take in the game. These are her skills, culture, creativity, romance and discipline. She has 50 bucks in her pocket and there are seven phases of every day. There's, I think, uh, I think there's dawn, morning, noon, afternoon, evening, dusk, and night. She goes to bed every night and she wakes up every morning. And each action you take in the game takes one of these steps. Too bad I can explain it more because I really uh, would like to show you the tutorial, but I haven't found a way how to do that again. The game just skips it and goes right to this. I would probably have to reinstall the game. Which I could have, thinking about it. Well, never mind. Uh, this, this will play a huge role. Uh, from what I was told in the tutorial, there are nine possible endings. There are four characters you can get involved with. Uh, one of your being a boyfriend, and then three others which we will meet in the game. And there are two endings for each of those uh, relationships and one where you fly solo and decide to stay alone. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much it, and we can now move to the story. 
hopefully you guys will find it as interesting as I do because I'm I was really fascinated always by the notion of amnesia and how this thing works. And the game represents it quite well in my opinion. That's a standard intro. Uh, it's going to show you a bit about the characters before we uh, get right into it. We were walking together, hand in hand, watching as the sun descended beneath the horizon. The evening was wearing on, and the warm colors of twilight were starting to fade from the sky. Amarantha, I don't know what to do. Aaron, you're doing enough, don't worry about things so much. This is, by the way, her boyfriend, this is the main protagonist. Amarantha, but he still doesn't approve of me. You think he doesn't like my job? Maybe he thinks it doesn't earn enough money, or that I should be doing something better. I would like to do more, but it's the best part-time job I could find. His eyes were sympathetic as he looked down at my worried expression. I know he feels bad that his father, Osher, was creating so much grief for us, but I also knew that the situation was going to be difficult when I decided to stay with him. Aaron, I don't think it's your work. He can be pretty stubborn. Amy, I know some people think that I could do better. It's not like a job and an ice cream parlor is anything special. I'm attending my first year of college for creative writing. It's a natural fit, since I've always loved to write poetry and prose. I had to take a part-time job during the summer to pay for my studies. Amy, some girls in my classes have really good summer jobs. Honestly, said he, I don't think he'd approve of any girl without a lot of persuading first. I don't think it's anything personal. He's just being stubborn. Amy. Yes, but after all this time, I really thought that he would have warmed up to me by now. Arn. He just doesn't understand that we're serious about our relationship. Yeah, one thing that I really like about the game as well is that despite being way older than... Well, actually, no. Amy could be like 20, 21. And uh, so could he... You can relate to a lot of uh, what is happening in the game, and it doesn't seem unreal. Amy, or he doesn't want you to understand. It's just so exasperating, since everyone else has been so supportive of us. He'll come around eventually, said he. It's just a matter of time. I hope so, said Amy. I just wish he wouldn't object almost every time he finds out we're going out on a date. Arn, I know, but it'll get better soon. I promise. We reach the staircase that lead back to the boardwalk and parking lot. Even over the sand dunes, I could see where Arn's motorcycle was parked. We were about to ascend the stairs when he stopped and turned around to face me. He took my other hand in his and we down, leaned down, gently kissing me on the lips. I couldn't help but smile slightly, feeling my anxiety melt away. Arn, don't look so worried all the time, okay? You're much more beautiful when you're smiling, Amy. I returned the smile and leaned up to kiss him again. Amy, you're such a romantic. You make it sound like a bad thing, said he. We both laughed as we ascended the stairs, still hand in hand. Amy, this is definitely how it should be. I always feel so safe with him at my side. Arn, let's go home, alright? Okay, but can we stop for ice cream first? I get an employee discount on everything, you know. Are sure. They have the best new type of ice cream sundae now, said she. We should split one. Sounds good, nodded he. My smile grew brighter as pleasant thoughts passed through my mind. He mounted his motorcycle and I sat on the back, wrapping my arms around his middle and holding on tightly. I rested my head against his broad shoulders and not a contented sight escaped my lips as the engine started up. The sun disappeared beneath the horizon, and the darkness of night began to overtake the city. We sped out of the parking lot in less than a minute, and on to the near empty road that led back into the town. The trees blurred as we flew down the road. We were only driving for a short while before a strange feeling of foreboding settled over me. I shivered involuntarily, despite the warm temperature, and squeezed the arm tightly watching as it got darker and darker on the one-way road. I was thinking of what to make for us for breakfast in the morning when we reached an intersection. We waited patiently for the light to change color, and when the green circle let off its artificial glow, Arn resumed driving. We had just entered the intersection when, very suddenly, I heard it. 
aim at one. I looked up, eyes wide with confusion, to see another car barreling down the road, swerving back and forth as it approached us. Aaron tried to steer away from the oncoming vehicle, but there was no hope of evasion. The car made no attempt to brake as it passed through the red light and collided with us. All I remember before the hellacious sound of the crash and losing consciousness was Aaron turning the motorcycle to try and protect me from being directly hit. So there's the backstory. Where, when I opened my eyes, the brightness of the light above me were almost blinding. Though I had never spent very much time in a hospital, I recognized the scent of disinfectant and various other cleaners to be similar to what one smelled in the doctor's office. Where am I? It took me another moment of waiting for my eyes to adjust to the bright lights before I remembered what had happened. My eyes widened in horror at the vividness of the memory. Arn! Amy screamed. I sat up abruptly, feeling a dull ache when I moved. A nurse out in the hallway heard my sudden cry and quicker heard inside my room. Miss, please lay back down, said the nurse. We weren't serious you weren't seriously injured in the crash, but we wouldn't we would like you to rest before we decide if you're ready to be released. I will be looking after you until that time comes. Your injuries are minimal, only minor bruising, but we can't let you leave just yet. Amy, we we were in a car accident, right? That's correct, confirmed the nurse, but please lay back down. We are very glad to see you conscious, but the rest is imperative. I reluctantly laid back down, but I was completely awake and not letting the woman leave before I heard a proper explanation. Amy, can you tell me what happened? What about the man who was with me? Aaron, is he okay? The nurse's expression seems to darken slightly when I mention him which made me worry even more. What happened? I have to know. Nurse, I am not fully aware of the situation. I need to call Dr. Reiner. He can explain everything to you. I waited impatiently, dissatisfied with the nurse's quick departure. It only took a few moments for a handsome young man in a doctor's uniform to enter the room. By the way, this guy is a second character you can date and end up with. I was surprised to see that he wasn't all that much older than Aaron and I most likely a fresh graduate out of medical school. Good evening, Amy. I'm very glad to see you're away. My name is Eddie Reiner, but you can call me Eddie. The man said with a warm smile, revealing perfectly white teeth. Amy. Yes, yes, good evening. What time is it? Is it still Saturday? Eddie. Actually, it's technically Sunday. It's three in the morning. I'd be happy to answer your questions, but you should probably get back to bed soon. Was doing a graveyard shift, as it seems. Amy, I'm not doing anything until I find out what happened to Aaron. The young doctor's smile faded, his reaction much like the nurse's. Unable to hold back my growing worry, I found myself starting to yell as tears gathered in my eyes. I have to know what happened to him, please, is he alright? Eddie stood up and nodded towards the door, motioning me for him to follow, motioning me to follow him. I felt her, my heart sink then begin to fill with cold dread. He noticed the fear in my expression and gave me a brief explanation. I've rather show you his current condition, but I assure you he's fine and his life is in no danger. He has sustained a head injury. He will recover and it doesn't seem to have done any severe damage, but he has lost some of his memories. We're still trying to observe the specifics of just how, uh, of just what he has forgotten. As the nurse probably told you, your injuries are minimal. Please follow me. I can take you to him so you can see that he is alright. I hurried, pulling on a pair of slippers that had been left beside my bed, and followed after the young doctor as he led me out of my hospital room and into the hallway, listening attentively to every word he said. Eddie, from what I can tell, he was trying to protect you during the crash. We're keeping you overnight for observation, but other than some bruises, you're perfectly okay. You don't have any broken bones or severe internal bleeding, thanks to Aaron's effort. What about a minor's internal bleeding? I felt my heart wrench as I followed him through the hallways. He wasn't walking very quickly, apparently conscious of how tired I felt. Amy, Aaron, Eddie, from what I could, from what we could tell, Aaron is suffering from amnesia. He still retains long-term memories, but recent ones from the past few years, or recent my ass, 
I haze it to non-existent. He's quite a bit confused at the moment, so we want to be sure not to cause him any unnecessary emotional stress. We need him to regain his memory on his own, but it will be in slow steps. Amy, I, I see. This is my studio. I know this is a lot for you to take in, so please feel free to ask me any questions you might have. He still remembers his family, but he doesn't seem to recall anything from recent years. Amy, you mean he doesn't remember me? Eddie, I'm sorry. We asked him about having a girlfriend, but he doesn't seem to remember anyone by the name of Amy. I felt the tears I'd been determined not to cry, welling up again, ready to fall. I see. We walked through a doorway and into a room with a glass window that let me see into Arne's room. Eddie, I'm sorry to ask this of you, but since we don't want to cause him any grief or aggra aggravate his condition, I must ask you that you do not meet with him yet. He's very confused and needs rest. I understand. Oh, she's crying. I remained there for a long time, watching him and letting tears silently slip down my cheeks as two nurses spoke to Aaron, who wore a perplexed expression. How could you forget all about me? So, we have reached the main game, but the story will unwrap in a few next scenes before we are truly free to do whatever we want. Uh, this is just an explanation. You can move between locations using the map. Right now, you can only return back to your home, but later in the game, you'll be able to move where you want. So the green uh, arrow shows where you can go. This is the hospital, and here is your home. You live here with your aunt Wanda and your cat Nina. I was raised from the hospital in the morning and came right home. When I walked inside, I was greeted with a soft meow when my cat, Nina, brushed up against my leg. Hi Nina, did you miss me? When I noticed the drop in morale and energy, we are pretty much down, which is not surprising based on what happened. I smiled and reached out to pet her affectionately, though I couldn't help but remember how Aaron would always fuss over her. Nina was a great judge of character, and she adored Aaron. Even before he started bringing treats for her all the time. Oh, you see, bastard, buying the cat. Amy, Aaron always loved cats so much. He loved big cats and little cats like you, but you were always his favorite kitty. Man, that cat, I know they wanted to make her cute, but she creeps me out. Nina cuddled my fingers affectionately when I knelt down to pick her up. Amy, but Aaron has probably forgotten about you, too. The sadness I had been trying to keep out of the front of my mind returned as I pulled my cat into an embrace and sighed. I had slept very poorly and the fatigue from the crash hadn't worn off. I lost my parents in a car accident, yeah that's the second thing man, her life is pretty shit. She lost her parents, now she lost her boyfriend, she's working in an ice cream shop. This is pretty bad. And now it looks like I'm going to lose the man I love to one as well. I sat in the living room with Nina on my lap when Gwenda came in to confront me. This is the like the only positive character I have met yet in the game. Gwenda. Oh Amy, what happened? I briefly told her about the accident. She was overjoyed to know that I was alright and that I had hardly been hurt. Gwenda. Oh thank god you're okay, but why didn't you call me? The doctor said I was alright and I didn't want you to worry about me. Well that's smart. I had been staying with my aunt Gwenda for several years, since my parents passed away when I was still young. Gwenda had taken care of me ever since. She is a kind woman and I greatly appreciate how caring she had always been of me. However, her pension wasn't enough to fully pay for my college tuition, which is why I took the part-time job at the ice cream parlor. You can now make your first choice. Several icons will pop up, showing you all the possible actions in this location. On each icon you'll see a brief description and the effects of the action. Each choice consumes a lot, at least one turn of a game time, or a lot. <laughs> Some actions are available only during certain periods of the day. For example, Aunt Gwenda goes to bed very early, so you won't find her hanging around at late hours. It was now noon, so a good thing to do could be to eat something, or you can just relax and read a book. So we can talk with Gwenda which will increase our morale and some stats, but if we fail, our morale will take another hit, 
We can read an old book, again morale and some stats up, energy down, or in case of failure, morale down, energy down. Or we can cook something, success, morale and energy up, failure, morale down, or no change, energy up. This, by the way, is really tricky. Cost 10 bucks and up just means that you pretty much will spend a random amount. So last time I cooked it, I spent like 20 bucks, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs>